everyone in today's class we will start a new topic marginal costing so today i'm not feeling that energy so i've just grabbed a cup of coffee and those of you who are sleepy heads grab a cup of coffee and i'm sure that you will feel the energy inside so coming to the topic marginal costing how do we introduce this topic let's say we are going to start a coffee shop okay now there are certain terms that you need to know. one is selling price the price at which you sell one cup of coffee is a selling price. So assume it is say 50 rupees. Okay. Now you have two types of expenses. One is a variable expenses and the other one is the fixed expenses. Now the fixed expenses are those expenses which remain constant. Example, your shop rent. So even if you are selling one cup of coffee or you are selling 200 cups of coffee, the fixed cost remains the same. Okay. And the variable expenses are those expenses which increase, which increase when you produce more number of units, like the direct material, for example, for the coffee, the coffee, the coffee powder that you use, it increases when you increase the quantity of coffee that you produce. There are certain other variable expenses too, like direct labor. Suppose you have employed a chef and he's being paid on a piece rate basis. What do you mean by piece rate basis? Piece rate basis means if he manufactures one cup of coffee, he gets a five rupees. Two cups of coffee, he gets 10 rupees. Three cups of coffee, 15 rupees and so on. That is the meaning of piece rate basis. Depending on the number of units, he gets his wages. The other expenses which increases are the overheads. What do you mean by overheads? I will give you an example. Like the, the dishwashing liquid. The dishwashing liquid that you use for cleaning the cups after use. So that also increases as you increase the number of units. So we know three types of variable cost. What are the three types of variable cost? Direct material, example, the coffee powder, direct labor, the wages that you pay to the chef, variable overheads like the cleaning equipment. Now listen carefully. This is the first formula that you're going to learn. Selling price minus the variable cost is known as the contribution. And why is it known as contribution? That amount contributes towards meeting your fixed cost and contributes towards meeting your profits. So that is why it is termed as contribution. So what is contribution? Contribution is selling price minus variable cost. Let's assume that the selling price of one cup of coffee is 50 rupees and the variable cost is 30 rupees. So let's see what the contribution per unit is. The next formula that you have to learn is the C bias ratio. C standing for contribution and S standing for sales. So what is the C bias ratio? Contribution divided by sales. And what does this mean? It simply means that what proportion of sales is the contribution. So let's see what the C bias ratio is. Now, what do you mean by C bias ratio is equal to 40% or 0.4? It simply means that 40% of the sales is the contribution or 40% of the sales will contribute towards your fixed cost and will contribute towards your profit. Now, the first formula was contribution per unit. We know that the contribution for one cup of coffee is 20 rupees. What about the total contribution? So in order to find out the total contribution, we need to know the number of units that we are selling. So assume that we are selling 200 cups of coffee. So what is the total contribution? Total contribution is total sales minus total variable cost. What did we say the contribution per unit as? It is selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. And what is total contribution? It is just total of the sales and the total of the variable cost. Quite simple, right? The number of units is 200 and selling price per unit is 50. So what is the total sales? 200 into 50. And regarding the total variable cost, 200 cups and per cup, you're incurring a variable cost of 30 per unit. So what is the total variable cost? It is 200 into 30. So let's make a note of it. Total sales is 200 into 50 
and total variable cost is 200 into 30. So 50 is a selling price and 30 is a variable cost per unit. So what do you get the answer as? The answer is 10,000 minus 6,000 or 4,000 rupees. So if we are selling 200 cups of coffee, we will get a total contribution of 4,000 rupees. Next, what should you know? We should know the profit that we are earning if we are selling 200 cups. And what is the formula for profit? Profit formula is given by total contribution minus the fixed cost. We know the total contribution is 4,000 rupees and just assume that the fixed cost is 2,000 rupees. So what is the profit that you earn? 4,000, which is the contribution, minus the fixed cost, that is the assumed fixed cost that we have taken for our example. So what is the profit that we are earning? We are earning a profit of 2,000 rupees when we are selling 200 cups of coffee. So, so far we have learned four formulas, the contribution per unit, the C by S ratio, the total contribution and the total profit that you earn. Now, as a businessman, our next interest is to know what is the minimum number of units that we have to sell to get to the break-even point. What is the break-even point? Break-even point is the no profit, no loss situation. That is, at a certain point, we will not be incurring any loss and we will not be getting any profit. So what is that break-even point? Let's see the formula for the break-even point. Break-even point in units is given by the formula fixed cost divided by the contribution per unit. And the fixed cost, we had assumed it as 2000 rupees. And what was the contribution per unit we got? It was 20 rupees. So what is the break-even point? It is 2000 rupees, which was the assumed fixed cost. And the contribution per unit of one cup of coffee was 20 rupees. So it is divided by 20. So if we sell 100 cups of coffee, we will reach the break-even point. That is the no profit, no loss situation. Now, this is break-even point in units. Now let's get to know what is the break-even point in rupees or in value. The next formula is break-even point in rupees or in value, which is fixed cost divided by the C by S ratio. Fixed cost, we already know that we have assumed it as 2000 rupees and we had already calculated the C by S ratio at 40% or 0.4. So let's substitute and see what is the break-even point in value. So fixed cost is 2000 and C by S ratio is 0.4. So we get the answer as 5000 rupees. What does this mean? If we sell 5000 worth of coffee, then we reach the break-even point. So the first formula was the break-even point in units which was fixed cost divided by contribution per unit. And the second formula was break-even point in value, which is fixed cost divided by C by S ratio. Alternatively, you could also find the break-even point in value by simply multiplying the 100 cups with your selling price. What was your selling price? Your selling price was 50. So 100 into 50, you will also get the very same answer of 5,000 rupees. Now we know that if we sell 100 cups or if we sell 5,000 worth of coffee, then we will reach the break-even point. What is our next interest? We should have a budgeted sales. What do you mean by budgeted sales? The sales that we plan to achieve for the next year. Now we know that the break-even point is 100 cups. So let's say that we plan to sell 150 cups in the next year. So 150 cups. Now, if you plan to sell 150 cups, then you have exceeded the break-even point by 50 units, correct? So that 50 units is known as the margin of safety. That is, we are safe by an extra 50 units. So let's get to see the formula of margin of safety or MOS. Now I've just copied the answers that we've already found out. What was the break-even point in units? 100 cups and break-even point in value is 5,000 rupees. If planned sales or budgeted sales is 150 cups, then margin of safety in units is given by the formula budgeted sales minus the break-even sales. What is our budgeted sales? We have planned to sell 150 cups. And what is the break-even sales? Break-even sales, we already found that it is 100 cups. So what is the margin of safety? Margin of safety is 150 minus 100 or 50 cups. Now, this margin of safety that we have just found out is margin of safety in units. 
we can also find the margin of safety in rupees or in value. So the first step is the plant sales is 150 cups, right? And we are selling each cup at 50 rupees. So what is the plant sales in rupees? It is 150 into 50 rupees or 7,500. So our budgeted sales for next year in rupees is 7,500. Now let's see what is the formula for margin of safety in rupees or in value. Margin of safety in value is given by the formula budgeted sales minus break-even sales. So both these formulas are same, except that the margin of safety in units, all the figures will be in units, that is budgeted sales and break-even sales will be in units. And when we take the margin of safety in value, the budgeted sales and the break-even sales will also be in value or in rupees. So let's substitute the figure. Budgeted sales in rupees, it is 7,500 and break-even sales in rupees, it is 5,000. So what is the margin of safety in rupees? It is 7,500 minus 5,000 or 2,500 rupees. So this is in rupees, okay? So that was margin of safety in units and margin of safety in value. Now, the next step is to find out the margin of safety as a percentage. So let's take a look at the formula. Margin of safety as a percentage is given by the formula MOS divided by budgeted sales. And what is MOS in units? It is 50 cups. And what is a budgeted sales in units? It is 150 cups. So what is MOS as a percentage? It is 50 by 150 or 33%. Now, this MOS as a percentage can be calculated in units or in value. So if we were to calculate the MOS percentage in value, then how would we do it? It is MOS in rupees divided by budgeted sales in rupees. What is MOS in rupees? We have just found out the MOS in rupees is 2,500. And what is a budgeted sales in rupees? We know that it is 7,500. So what is the MOS as a percentage if we calculate in rupee terms? It is 2,500. That is this divided by 7,500. We get the very same answer of 33%, which means that MOS as a percentage can be calculated either in rupees or in units. We get the very same answer. Now, as a businessman, what is our next interest? We would like to get a target profit. So suppose our target profit is say 10,000 rupees. So we want to know how many units should we sell to get this 10,000 rupees. So let's take a look at the formula. So I've just copied the details for your easy reference. What is a fixed cost that we have assumed? 2,000 rupees. What is a contribution per unit that we have found out? 20 rupees per unit. What is the C bias ratio that we had found out? It is 40% of 0 0.4. Now, our target profit is 10,000. So we are interested to know how many units should we sell to get this target profit of 10,000. So what is the formula? Sales volume to achieve a target profit in units is given by fixed cost plus required profit in the numerator divided by contribution per unit. So what is the fixed cost? Fixed cost, we have assumed it as 2,000. And what is the required profit or the target profit? It is 10,000. So 2,000 plus 10,000 goes in the numerator. And contribution per unit, what did we find out? It is $20 per unit. So how many units should we sell? Let's substitute and find out. It is 2,000 plus 10,000 divided by 20, or it is 600 cups, which means that if you sell 600 cups, you will get a target profit of 10,000 rupees. Now, what we need to find out is how much sales in rupees should we make to get a target profit of 10,000. So the next formula, the sales volume to achieve a target profit in value is given by the formula fixed cost plus required profit divided by C bias ratio. We know the fixed cost is 2,000 and the required profit is 10,000. So substituting those figures in the numerator and the C bias ratio, we have already found that it is 0 0.4. So that goes in the denominator. So we get an amount of 30,000 rupees. What does this mean? It simply means that 
if we make a sale of 30,000 rupees, then we get a target profit of 10,000. So what I want you to do is there are 11 formulas that have been taught in today's class. Just make a note of it in your notebook so that it will help you in the subsequent classes. Let's take a break while you memorize the formulas and we will be continuing with the topic of marginal costing in the coming session. So thank you for watching and meet you in the next video.